Hello, and welcome back to Pleasant View. A Pleasant View that is slowly growing bigger and bigger. I um, have recently built a few um, community lots around the place and I thought I'd point them out to you because we don't think I've done that. <laughs> uh, so the longest time ago, uh, I built Forest Edge Camp around here. And that is the um, um, community lot that Benjamin Day is using for the Scouts Club. Then we also have, if you go up this way to the bridge, we have Art Records and Gas. That's the gas station and the record store that I built. And then uh, most recently we have down here in the um, area where um, the Burbs, the Lillards and uh, the Day family and so on, they live. We have the Planetary Pet Park that I only just built as well. So the place is growing bigger and uh, there's more exciting places for my sims to visit. So that's really exciting. But this episode is going to center around Bo Newby, and he lives over here in this apartment complex together with uh, Brittany Tellerman and uh, Oliver Bertino. So here's the house. It is morning and uh, so far only... Um, Melissa Fancy is uh, up and also her son Jason playing with Leroy. <laughs> and of course, Melissa is going to head off to um, work as a um, nurse at the um, uh, elder home. But uh, Bo and his uh, roommates are also up and about because they were <laughs> errored out of their um, beds because I messed with mods. But um, I fixed the beds already, so you don't have to see that. <laughs> Um, so this is uh, Bo's room. He has the biggest room in this apartment. And uh, last time Oliver moved in as well in this room here. Very cramped. <laughs> and also Brittany has her own room in the corner here uh, with a single bed still. And Bo and Brittany, they have only just graduated from college as well. And they uh, moved into this apartment together as they started out with their careers. And uh, Bo is employed by Malcolm Langrab at Langrab Industries. And uh, last time he was actually promoted to junior executive. The thing is though that I took a look at the schedule and realized that he would have Wednesdays off and he would work on Saturdays. But I don't know what kind of work would be available for him on Saturdays and yeah, it just seems strange to me <laughs> that Bo would randomly be the only one except Phoenix working in the weekends. Um, so I actually went ahead and removed that career level out of my spreadsheet and uh, made Bo an executive instead. So he's at the same level as Chandler. So uh, they are basically working with the same thing in my mind, um, furthering the business on the same level, doing the same work tasks, basically even though Chandler has been working for a bit longer, so he's kind of the senior. <laughs> and um, that means that Bo is going to start work at 8 instead of 9, and he's going to come home at 3 instead of 4. So that's fine. I also remember to give him a job stopinator and a job outfit stopinator. <laughs> so that's good. Um, I can see that he wants to get fit. Uh, I think that he became overweight last time uh, because he's slightly on the lazy side uh, but while I played his uh, younger brother Mike uh, he, Mike actually invited him over to the gym <laughs> Mike is such a gym rat um, that um, he invi invited Bo over and uh, they worked on his physique together so now he's up to uh, slightly below um, the mid stage here uh, but apparently Bo is thinking that it would be nice to be fit, but I, I don't think that he's going to want to to push for that. So yeah, Bo is going to um, start his morning. Um, the needs are kind of reset now because they have um, been errored out of their beds, but um, I think he can go downstairs and uh, have some breakfast. And uh, yeah... Also, Oliver and uh, Brittany are going to have their mornings. I'm not going to control them as much, though, because they leave an hour later. But um, Brittany is going to clean the fish tank and feed her fish. I'm taking a look at Leroy. He's downstairs and um, 
he's not all that old really, so I'm curious how well trained he is. He could do with some more training actually. Um, yeah, he's not really housebroken either, so <laughs> um, maybe I should keep an eye on that. Oh, he's hostile again towards other sims, so I would, I'm gonna have Oliver go downstairs and scold him for that. But um, Bo has um, been seeing uh, another man recently, um, Bruce Rocher, who's been uh, coming over and um, yeah, then they've been secretly seeing each other. Uh, Bo is um, still in the closet. He uh, um, has not uh, had the bravery to um, confront his uh, mother and tell her about his real sexuality yet. And um, what with Oliver moving in and not being in on his secret, it has become increasingly difficult to maintain that for Bo. Um, and uh, well, Bruce and uh, Oliver, they really dislike each other. Uh, I think that he's um, at the bottom here. <laughs> yeah, there he is. It's like 100 over 100. It's really, really bad. Um, so, um, yeah, they're not getting along and the things are pretty tense when Bruce is over for several reasons. Um, so Bo is really struggling with that, what he should do about it. Should he tell Oliver? Should he... Uh, try to see Bruce in other places. Um, he's also a bit insecure about his relationship with Bruce because he wants to take things really slow and careful and secret. And Bruce uh, is starting to get sick and tired of it, starting to um, really question why Bo doesn't feel like he can um, openly be together with him, why he can't become Bo's boyfriend properly. Like, is he ashamed of him or something? Um, so that's really put a strain on their um, growing relationship as well. So I think that that uh, is uh, part of what Bo is thinking about. Getting ready in the morning. But of course, he's going to have um, his job to distract him now as well. So that's a good thing. Apparently, um, Oliver decided to sit down and hang out with <laughs> Jason. I see. Isn't it better that you also have breakfast, though? can check what leftovers they have. Um, oh, and Brittany is uh, practicing <laughs> on the pace. I don't want her to do that. You can uh, also go downstairs here. And yeah, the carpool has arrived for, uh, for Bo. Uh, he technically does have a car in his pocket, but uh, they don't have anywhere to, like a, a parking space to put that car. So, um, yeah, I'm going to make do with the, the carpool. <laughs> right, so Boaz left work and uh, we'll see him back at Land Grab Industries. And here we are at the Land Grab house. So Malcolm is currently having breakfast with his family. And um, since he is the CEO, technically he should have the day off today, but uh, I'm going to send him anyway. I feel like Malcolm is such a workaholic that he um, would just go to work anyway. It's the, a weekday <laughs> after all. Um, so I'm just going to send him anyway. And then uh, when he comes back home, I'm just going to let him have a day off, uh, technically. So, um, yeah, he's um, about ready to leave. I think. Looks like little Lewis wants some attention. <laughs> Let's um, praise for being playful. Oh yeah, I think Lewis uh, only just aged up into an adult dog actually. So um, I think there's plenty for him to learn still. Yeah. <laughs> for example, not uh, destroying furniture. <laughs> Pretty important, but uh, he's close to being housebroken anyway, so that's good. And uh, yeah, I've also given Malcolm a slight makeover. 
Um, I felt like yeah, it was time for him to get some new clothes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have him um, head out to his car and uh, drive to his community lot. Um, but actually, since I now have a properly set up business for Randy with some uh, lunch to purchase, I think I'm actually going to make him head to Randy's first, pick up some lunch, and then go to Land Grab Industries so that he can actually, well, so that I can start to use that lot properly. So if we go to Randy's. And there should still be some time for him to, to do that. I probably should have sent him earlier, but yeah, it's fun. It's Malcolm's business. It can be a bit late. <laughs> and of course, also the school bus is here for the children. Also have some weeds in the corner here. So weird that they're spawning in the corner of the lots. So Malcolm is pulling up to the lot and uh, well technically this is part of uh, land grab industries <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, he wants to support this business as well as it starts up anyway <laughs> so uh, he's gonna pay for uh, the food so um, yeah let's just start by having him buy something and um, it's going to be six servings and I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough. I'm just going to double check how many workers I have at Land Grab Industries. It's actually exactly the right number, which is good. <laughs> so um, I don't have to mess around with anything. Question is what he would get. I guess um, let's go for some uh, risotto. Uh, looks like Randy wants to greet him first though, so let's see if that actually works. He might come out. Yeah, he's coming out actually from the store to greet him. I guess maybe Malcolm called ahead in his car that, hey, I'm coming over, <laughs> checking out the business. So they can actually start by uh, chatting briefly. And of course, Malcolm is starting to talk about I suppose the ingredients and if the Randy has everything that he needs and the Randy's like, hey, stop worrying. I'm up and starting the business already. You don't have to <laughs> start um, worrying about that. That's my part of the business. You take care of your part. <laughs> so yeah, Malcolm feels uh, told off and <laughs> heads into the store. Uh, yeah, so I'm picking up some uh, risotto for him. Nice, I'm gonna pay for those items. Great! So now uh, Malcolm has some lunch for his workers and he can uh, head over to um, his business, Land Grab Industries. And Malcolm is arriving at work, parking down in the garage. And hmm, I wonder, did I give him this um, uniform to wear? I probably did. Uh, so I should remove that management. Doesn't say anything about the uniform though. So uh, I actually don't know why he's wearing that. <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna change him to his everyday outfit then. Strange. Um, yes. But anyway, so now he actually brought lunch. So he's not gonna need to have the buffet table. Oh, it's really bright in here. I probably should uh, also remove some lights, I think. Just gonna check what it looks like in the, in the night. Yeah. Should probably... Put in some uh, ceiling light here instead. Yeah, that's a lot better. Still really bright in this corner of the room, but I think that might be because of um, because of the windows right here. All right, but this one is not needed anymore. Um, so I'm gonna um, 
Hmm, how do I want to do this? Probably want to move this. And then add one more in. And I think that I want to have a um, sink there in the corner. Don't I have a sink up here? Yes, I want to use the same sink. Um, hmm. I don't think that he needs to have two dishwashers here. Um, but I think it would be nice to have like the visuals of a um, mini fridge. Um, so that it's actually logical like where is the food stored? Oh, in the mini fridge. Yeah, I think that might work. So I'm going to try that out. And uh, actually also upstairs, I have this um, rack, Tom's clothing tester, and I was using that for um, um, applying the work outfits. But since I'm going to use the uh, casual outfits now, I don't need that anymore. So I, I'm going to remove that. Yes, and I think also... Oh, I think I might have already moved the sim blender from up here. Is it here now? Maybe I removed it completely. <laughs> yeah, because I think I was struggling a bit. No, here it is actually in this corner. Yeah, because I was struggling a bit with having everyone appear on the third floor <laughs> uh, when they came in for work. It didn't make much sense, but this actually makes a lot of sense to have it in the entrance. Then they, they walk properly to where they're supposed to go. Um, yes, so um, I'm going to start by summoning in the workers. And here they are. Um, all of them um, wearing their outfits, uh, well, casual outfits, I suppose. Uh, but that makes sense, I think, for a, a modern business. At least in Sweden, we don't really have uh, suits and stuff <laughs> to, to most workplaces, I think. Um, yeah, so Phoenix, of course, is the mailroom technician. He's uh, going to sit down here in the reception area and work. And I think he can work at, um, does he need anything? He probably wants to uh, get better at charisma. And that would be good for his career too. So um, I'm going to have fashion and styles. And as for the other people, they're going to start the morning with a meeting. And Malcolm is going to sit here. And then I'm going to position everyone around the table. Right, and they're heading upstairs. And uh, yeah, everyone is going to use the staircase now because I sneakily removed the uh, elevator on the um, second floor. And uh, yes, visitor controller. <laughs> Let's see. I think that has been reset, so I need to ban everyone again. Oh yeah, it's up here. So ban all ages and ban all NPCs. That should take care of Kennedy coming over. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Kennedy, um, his business is um, also part of uh, land grab industries. So it sort of made sense that he appeared here. <laughs> well, it's not a part of it. It's more that they are in business with each other. So um, Malcolm is paying Kennedy to um, both sponsor the um, soccer field and also to um, pay for advertisement. So around the soccer field, uh, there's going to be like advertisement banners for like Land Grab Industries and uh, Randy's. Um, restaurant and catering and, and also Goopy J.S. Carbo's um, restaurant, Hattoria de Carbo. Um, yeah, so I just uh, stopped Bo because I think he was about to go down to the garage and go that way. <laughs> and apparently Emalcom is coming this way as well. And I think we have a reviewer here as well who needs to be banned. Should be Carol. Yep. And uh, yeah, apparently Lauren decided to sit there instead. So I'm going to ask her to move. It's 
started to rain, so now they want to stand up. <laughs> Please don't. Um, I'm gonna cancel out that interaction. Try to get a good angle while still seeing their speech bubbles. That's a bit of a challenge. So I'm just gonna do it like this, I think. Um, so last time that I played this business, they were talking a lot about the uh, nightlife in Pleasant View, or the lack thereof, really. And um, that they uh, wanted to focus a lot on like restaurants and any kind of um, community lots that Sims can go to to have fun in the evening. While they have been discussing that, of course, um, another business has already started up uh, taking that idea and uh, doing something else. And uh, that is the business right here. That is uh, Jihoon's Red Oak Bar. That has popped up out of nowhere that they could not um, proceed. <laughs> and that is going to... Um, encourage a lot of people to come and visit in the evenings of course so I think that um, they are probably uh, thinking about what kind of competition could they come up with um, something that's a little bit different um, that's still going to work in the neighborhood um, but that's going to be sort of an alternative to that bar and uh, I do think that seeing as Malcolm was chased out of Blue Water Village after he um, mismanaged his <laughs> different businesses in that town, when it came to Pleasant View, he um, decided to do the uh, friendly approach instead to actually work with people and to take the town into consideration, not to make enemies with everyone because he learned firsthand what happened if he did that. So I don't think that he wants to have a business that is um, putting Jihoon out of his own business. I think that he wants to um, perhaps have something that goes hand in hand or something that gives an alternative to people who don't want to go to a bar or... Um, an alternative uh, for um, other days in the weekend. Um, even if a lot of people wants to go to the bar and listen to music and, and such. Um, not That's not everyone's thing. Um, so something like a an arcade or a um, bowling hall or a movie theater or um, I mean even a, a club. Malcolm did have a club Dante in Blue Water Village after all. Um, so he does have experience with that as well. And it's not impossible that he would like to start up something like that. Um, he would just have to find someone to run it basically in that case. So I think that that is um, amongst things that they are discussing. I think that they are also um, starting to discuss um, like balancing the books now that they have two businesses below them that are sending in money they need to have uh, everything under perfect control with the finances and uh, i think that malcolm demands a report at his desk before the end of the day and uh, bo is going to be in charge of uh, completing that task so that is what uh, he is going to uh, work today with the help of the others of course but he's going to to complete it so uh, yeah, these guys are gonna head out to their desks and start working properly. So Bo has pretty good logic and creativity, but he does need to work on his charisma. So I'm gonna have him uh, work at home charisma. Chandler needs to get better at logic though. So I'm gonna have him work at um, his logic skill. And Lashon needs to get better at cleaning. So that's what I'm going to do for her. And Lauren also needs to get better at charisma. Malcolm, on the other hand, is going to go upstairs to his office. And um, looking at his skills, he really needs to get better at everything. Um, but I think that he wants to focus on charisma. So let's see if they all do what I told them. <laughs>
Yeah, looks like it worked. The Phoenix is still working down at the reception desk. And apparently Malcolm preferred to go downstairs and then take the elevator up to the top floor. <laughs> So I think I'm going to have them work until um, 12, maybe. Then they can have their lunch. Nice. So Phoenix is uh, done, actually, with his um, article. So he's going to walk upstairs, drink a cup of coffee, just uh, leave the... Um, Entrance unsupervised. <laughs> I suppose there's like a little bell or something <laughs> that says, um, if you need help, ring the bell. <laughs> or a buzzer or something that uh, Phoenix can have in his pocket. <laughs> so uh, as he's sitting drinking coffee, um, I think that Phoenix is deliberately speaking with Bo. These last few uh, weeks, he's been uh, deliberately coming up here and um, been seeking out Bo, um, been um, engaging him in different kinds of conversations. Um, and um, to Bo, it seems like he's trying to um, be friendly and become friends or something like that. But uh, it's very consistent, very pointed specifically at Bo and uh, Bo doesn't really know why that is um, but as he's sitting here I think he's like engaging Bo also in conversation technically okay good so um, it's about time um, right they're putting down the uh, coffee cups on this book I think I realized that last time as well but um, now I actually have a some sort of blocker in my um, things here. It's called an occupied surface. So uh, I can just put that. It's impossible to know if it's actually on there or not now. But uh, I think if I do that, it's probably <laughs> on there. Because there's no uh, visible recolor, so I can't check it. But <laughs> I'm going to notice if it works or not, I suppose. Right, so I'm just going to interrupt everyone in their um, work and they're going to have to get back to it after. And I'm taking out um, the food that Malcolm got. There. And yeah, all of them are going to head downstairs. Apparently he needs to serve it. So um, yeah, I suppose I'll just have everyone head downstairs. Or actually, I can have Phoenix serve it, <laughs> since he's the mailroom technician and um, because he's um, also a bit earlier, like, done with his things than the other ones. I also view him a little bit like Malcolm's assistant, <laughs> like he, he does the dirty work, like preparing meeting rooms and um, getting um, the printing copies and things like that, getting mail and... Yeah, the handling deliveries and, and things like that. So that's part of his job. Nice. So everyone's actually going to sit at the same table this time. That's good. Um, <laughs> all right. So for some reason, um, Lashon starts talking about um, quitting a job. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I suppose that um, it's some sort of topic of like uh, before she moved to Pleasant View, the job she had before and uh, like the circumstances around why she moved here from uh, Sim City. And Malcolm is already done. Um, yeah, I think I noticed this last time as well that the hygiene is going down crazy fast on this lot. Uh, I think I set up this, but yeah, it's not working. So uh, this is the need freak. So I'm going to switch to defender mode, uh, set up all max 100, minus minus 100, and then set up um, hygiene. 
to minimum um, 75. And I can actually also do the same with energy. No, not max, minimum 75. And that should work. Um, but yeah, Malcolm is going to go back up to his office. That was a very quick lunch, but I think that he's um, such a workaholic. He's not going to linger down here with his um, workers. The Nix is actually also done, so he can go and use the bathroom. Talking about the college, apparently. Maybe they um, came onto that topic from um, Bo's recent uh, graduation. <laughs> I feel like Bo is very silent, though. He's uh, not engaging much in the conversation. It's basically Lashon and uh, Lauren and Malcolm who's been chatting so far. Oh, here we go. I actually think that Bo hasn't made out with anyone yet. Um, I'm just going to double check. But I think that he's just, yeah, he's just kissed Bruce once. But he haven't done anything more advanced than that, so... That was his first kiss as well. So interesting that he started to talking about making out. <laughs> yeah, these guys are not in a hurry to finish up their lunch. They are enjoying their um, little break, as they should. And uh, Phoenix uh, apparently is done at the bathroom, so I think he can come inside, um, clean up. Maybe he's like out here taking a smoking break or something. <laughs> Oh, wow. That Sean is not very professional throwing food at Lauren. <laughs> she did not appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, so Chandler and uh, Bo are done as well. So I'm going to send them back up to their workstations. Yeah, now also Lauren is done. Get home. Charisma. Yeah, Lauren's like, throwing food is actually a criminal offense, you know. <laughs> She used to be a police officer. <laughs> Lashon's like, yeah, I'm a criminal, all right. <laughs> oh, was point the way? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Phoenix, of course. <laughs> They're both blondes. <laughs> or is it the chair that's in the way? Can you go here? Yeah, you can. I don't know. But yeah, I think that this worked very well. Actually, it worked even better than the buffet table and it was way cheaper as well. So uh, I'm going to keep up with that. So you can uh, work more on charisma. So uh, Malcolm is actually done with his um, work. Yeah, I think that actually Malcolm is going to have a um, surprise visit. Um, yeah, all of a sudden, Don Lothario is walking through the front doors to Landgrab Industries, and uh, Phoenix is like looking up, <laughs> reacting, and uh, of course um, they've been checking each other out, um, talking from time to time when they see each other. So I suppose he he greets him very curiously, like what is he doing here? <laughs> what business does he have with Malcolm? Um, and yeah, Don is just sort of waving at him, I suppose, and heading immediately up to um, Malcolm's office. And uh, as soon as he walks into the elevator, Phoenix is interrupting whatever he's working on and um, hurrying up to the others <laughs> with the news.
so we're back at the lot and uh, Brittany and Oliver have a little bit more time until they have to leave for work. I got a pop-up message saying that Mo is apparently sick with a cold. <laughs> uh, so he needs some rest when he gets home, apparently. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to see if they can have breakfast together. Yeah, they have some um, um, omelets that they can have. And well, the thing about Brittany and uh, Oliver is that they are extremely attracted to each other, but they are involved with other people. So I think that there is uh, plenty flirting going on in this household right now between these two. When they are alone like this, of course, all uh, bets are off. <laughs> and um, Brittany is already to timing. She's been seeing Alexander Goff for a long time. Um, and she... Um, Rejected his um, advances. Um, when he proposed to her. She said no. And they recently had a long talk. In the um, Woodland Park. About their relationship. And um, she currently. Is um, keeping him away a little bit. While she ponders. What she wants to do. With her life basically. Or well with her love life that is. Alexander obviously wants to get married and start a family, but Brittany isn't really ready for all that. She's also been seeing Bo's little brother, Mike, while they were uh, still at university together. They haven't seen each other in a while now, though, so they have drifted apart a little bit. But that has been going on at the same time as she's been seeing Alexander. And she's also been flirting with Oliver. Um, so I think that Brittany isn't really... She's playing the field right now, basically. She's very young, of course, and uh, she thinks that this is a bit exciting, I think. Um, so I think that Oliver's um, attraction to her is just uh, fun in her mind. Oliver, on his side, is actually engaged to Demi Love. Um, he recently asked her to move in with him when he lived in his own apartment, but she actually said no. So um, he um, decided to move in here instead. And I'm not sure actually what is going on with their relationship. Um, because they are extremely attracted to each other. But then again, looks like he's uh, starting to try to grow closer to Brittany as well. And then apparently has um, wishes to ask Melissa on a date. But <laughs> I think she's a bit too old for him. And he also has this want locked in that he wants to woohoo with three different sims. So um, he is a secondary romance sim. And I'm pretty sure that Brittany also is a secondary romance. Let me double check. No, she's secondary family actually, which is a bit surprising then. Um, but there you go. Oh, nice. Bo is healthy again, so I don't really have to worry about that. <laughs> Good. Clean that up. And then Brittany, you can uh, put away the leftovers. Yeah, um, Oliver is an employee at Trattoria de Carbo. She's working as a server, whereas uh, Brittany is a police officer. So she's gonna head to work as well. And uh, for Brittany, I have not given her a job outfit stoppinator because I actually want her to wear the police uniform. <laughs> so I really like the, um, the way that that um, token allows you to actually pick and choose which seems get the work outfits and uh, which don't. I'm just gonna quickly before the leave check so that, yeah, the pet bowl <laughs> is empty. Oliver, you have to fill up the bowl before you leave. Otherwise, Leroy will be in trouble. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure that when Brittany arrives home, her plants are gonna be dead <laughs> because they're all super sickly. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> She keeps getting interrupted, and I don't know why. Um, let's try again. Okay, now it seems like it's working. Nice. So uh, only Leroy is left at home. He's um, hanging out in the kitchen, actually. Taking a nap on the floor. Um, he does have a pet bed, though. Um, pretty sure that it is in um, Oliver's bedroom. Yeah, here it is. So he's just um, choosing to sleep on the cold tile floor. 
I suppose maybe he was a bit hot or something. So I have a chance card for Brittany. Brittany and a co-worker have a bug collection at work, and Brittany notices that some of the flying insects have been incorrectly tagged by her co-worker. Should Brittany bring this to the co-worker's attention, or address the issue herself? I think that Brittany is pretty confident. She would um, tell the co-worker. Brittany decides to tell her co-worker about the mislabeled bugs. Although Brittany set out with good intentions, the ultra-sensitive co-worker takes it badly and yells at Brittany for being a perfectionist. Brittany feels dejected and loses nature enthusiasm. I wonder who that co-worker could be. Demi has the music and dance hobby. Ramin has... I don't remember. <laughs> and Sophie has sports. Dorian has food. I suppose it could be Ramin then. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Right, so little Leroy has woken up. Just having some uh, lunch. He's gonna go outside to relieve himself. He needs to take a bath as well. I think he could do that in the downstairs bathroom later. But he's really getting along with the neighbors. He's uh, constantly playing around with them. It's really cute. I think that Melissa actually got dressed for work, but she didn't uh, actually go to work. <laughs> it's interesting. Maybe it was interrupted just because I entered a lot at the time when she was about to leave or something. Yeah, the teens are arriving back from school. And Leroy is going upstairs to actually sleep in the pet bed, looks like. Or, well, at least relax. Yeah, so Bo and Brittany are coming home at the same time. But uh, Oliver's going to be home at five. Right, so um, looks like Bo's needs have gone down quite a bit since he left in the morning. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, the energy is always going, on da going down a lot because of the time control clock. So I'm going to bump everyone's need, uh, energy up a little bit. So that, uh, yeah, they don't get super tired at like 8 in the evening or something. Um, but then Bo needs to take care of his uh, hygiene a bit. And uh, yeah, his social is really, really low. And um, I interpret that as uh, him feeling really out of it after what he witnessed at work and the confrontation he had with uh, Malcolm. It looks like he is a little bit lost in his own thoughts right now. Um, not sure what to make out of what he uh, saw. So I think that he's like, yeah, feeling lost. Um, and uh, like he had a bad interaction with his boss as well. Brittany, on the other hand, is feeling great. <laughs> I think that she had a great day at work. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to similarly ask her to go up upstairs and freshen up. Looks like both of them are very proud of themselves, though. <laughs> yeah, so I think that uh, Bo can actually wash Leroy. You know, the company of a dog when you're feeling down and feel like uh, you've had bad interactions with people is uh, really soothing, I think. So I think that um, Leroy can really be a good companion for Bo right now. As we saw in the Dreamer episode, Bo has been um, bonding a bit with Leroy, taking him out for walks and such. And um, I think that um, he would really like to... Um, Get away from the house a bit, get away from um, Brittany <laughs> right now, who is um, likely to ask questions and um, just hang out with Leroy for a bit. And uh, I'm going to make use of the new community lot that I built, the, um, the dog park. And the boy is going to head over there with Leroy. 
Yeah, so I'm going to have him um, walk to Lot with Leroy. And there it is, Planetary Pet Park. So they're arriving to the park. Nice. And what I was thinking about this park is actually that it would be fun to actually have people come in with their dogs and hang out here. And um, I was looking around for a mod to like, well, ha have a spawnable object or something that would make people come to this lot with their pets. But I couldn't find anything even remotely similar to that. Um, I did find a mod that allowed pets, uh, no, sorry, strays on either it was like the lot you choose or all lots or something, but uh, that's not at all what I'm after. I actually wanted to be the owned dogs <laughs> that come here. So what I came up with is, uh, of course, <laughs> my own <laughs> custom thing, as always. And um, what I was thinking is that, well, I did this. So this is my um, spreadsheet and a new tab <laughs> that I named the dogs. And what I've done here is that I have listed all of the dogs in my neighborhood right now. And uh, my thought was that I was going to um, roll a uh, d6 and see um, how many dogs will be in the park. Um, so it's going to be either one or six, or anything in between. And then uh, once I know that, uh, I'm going to randomize what um, dog is going to be. If I end up rolling like one of the families who have several dogs, I might end up bringing in like, for example, John and Brandy, both of them together with both their dogs. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to do something like that. But I also want to sort of wait and see who actually shows up naturally. Because it is, if it is a dog owner, then I can simply just sim summon in their dog instead of um, forcing it. So uh, I'm going to actually start with that. Um, I'm going to just allow Bo and uh, Leroy to interact for a bit. They're going to play fetch out by the road, apparently. You can actually go here and um, call over Leroy instead. Oh, he would have to know that command to be able to be called over. Um, right. But uh, yeah, I can just move him into the park. Um, so that, that thing makes more sense. <laughs> so yeah. Mm. Try this again. Fetch. Play fetch. And I'm just going to hold off and see who appears. Apparently there already is a stray pet here and another one, which is weird because I thought that the visitor controller pre prevented that. I, I think I don't want them to be here actually. So I'm going to uh, ban strays, critters, ban strays. So, so far we don't have any dog owners having arrived. And I think that this might be it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take out the uh, sim blender. And uh, I'm going to just use misc clean and fill pet dishes so that it doesn't take any money to fill them up. And um, yeah, I'm going to roll my die and see. How many pets I get? Three. So yeah, I'm gonna have to randomize this somehow. So I suppose I'll bring up random.org. All right, so I'm gonna generate three results and the value should be between one and 22 because I have 22 dogs <laughs> apparently in Pleasanty right now. Um, yeah, and get numbers. So we have uh, eight, three and 16. I'm going to try to do this like this. 
yeah now we can see it better so number eight is uh, chase so that's ramin Sentowski and his uh, german shepherd the police dog chase i'm just gonna temporar temporarily mark him uh, with yellow so i don't forget <laughs> and number three is otis so that's uh, orlando bertino and lucy's dog and number 16 is uh, okay so that's eve um, so that's Brandy and Brandon Lillard, and they have two dogs, actually. So I think I'm going to bring in both of those. Yeah, and those are the uh, dogs that are going to be on the uh, lot. So I'm going to summon them in. Okay, perfect. So here we have the dogs now. And um, I suppose I'll just um, start time and see what they all get up to. Boy, you can stop playing with Leroy. You can actually um, chat with... You don't know Ramin, so greet Ramin, another dog owner. And you can uh, chat for a bit. So, so far, no, none of the dogs are um, interacting, but that might change. Looks like Otis is uh, patrolling the area, trying to find a playmate. No, he found uh, Brandon <laughs> to throw a stick at him. <laughs> yeah. So far, the dogs are pre preferring to uh, hang out with the humans, or well, with the Sims. Can I greet Orlando to interrupt him as well? <laughs> See if uh, little Susie does something else. I starts playing with Craig instead. <laughs> of course. I think I'll um, make Brandy selectable and she can um, distract Brandon <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ramin can uh, distract Craig. Let's see if the dogs actually interact. Mm. Looks like both Brandon and uh, Brandy are leaving, and Susie and Eve are both following them, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know that uh, the dogs are actually connected to the humans, then. <laughs> to the Sims. <laughs> Doing the same mistake again. Um, well, can you, like... Um, no, you can't command to play with another dog. No... I guess they uh, they aren't um, they haven't learned to be playful <laughs> or something. Mm. Yeah, bringing the owners might have been a mistake. Looks like they are very happy to distract the dogs. <laughs> Let's see if um, Leroy and Chase go for each other. No, Leroy is going for Craig. <laughs> Chase is going for the bone. Oh no. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, praise Leroy for peeing in the park <laughs> outside. <laughs> Orlando is <laughs> wiping the pee puddle up immediately. Now oh, that's a shame. And it looks like, um, yeah. All of the dogs are leaving now. Mm, too bad. Better luck next time, I suppose. But uh, I also am a bit anxious to try this out. See if maybe Leroy can uh, do some tricks. So, uh, yeah, let's start with maybe train Leroy on the uh, this little one. <laughs> Looks like it might be... Um, one of the one of the easier ones. Nice, so Leroy is coming over. Oh, is that one in the way? I wasn't sure how um, how closely together they could be, but I suppose that this is too close then. And I suppose that this is um, the wrong way around or something. So maybe. 
we try that. And yeah, now it works. So then I know that I have to go into the um, lot later and uh, change that. No. <laughs> you I didn't like jumping. <laughs> Let's try again. Yeah, so this is both uh, fun and uh, it's also increasing social for Boa, so that's nice. No, he jumped it. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, it, it went down. Okay. Yeah, I'm tired now. <laughs> so I think that uh, Leroy has had enough. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Maybe I can just try one more thing because I really want to see more of this. So let's see this one as well. What does that look like? Okay, so it's going down. He's walking up on it. Oh. <laughs> So close. It was scary. <laughs> Try again. Now he knows what to expect at least, but yeah, it's still still scary. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, looks like that's interesting. Romeo is here on his own. Is Dina here as well? No, but. Archie and Valerie are here. So they did come with a dog. I didn't know that that was even possible. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted. Then the game has already got me covered. <laughs> but yes, I still want to have more dogs than what is apparently normal then. But I mean, this is great. Really happy to see that. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and I want to try this. See if Leroy wants to go through the tunnel. Oh, <laughs> he did, but I think that the, the animation uh, is a bit wonky. I did read about that on the download page, so I think that, that this one was a bit difficult to uh, animate for the big dogs. Uh, so that makes sense. Cool, very fun. Um, so yeah, but I think that it's time for them to head back home then. But this was a fun, um, distracting outing for Bo, I think. Um, so um, I think that he feels a lot better now than what he felt like when he um, arrived back home. And uh, he has had some um, time to ponder everything that he um, learned about uh, Malcolm and the way that he has um, managed his life, basically. Now, Bo has grown up just thinking that he's going to have to hide um, and um, just not start a family and just pretend to be a loner, I think, in order to... Um, or maybe, like, fake a um, girlfriend pretend girlfriend or something like that. Uh, if he wants to go down that road, of course, he's also considered coming out as well. Um, but I think that learning about the way that Malcolm has handled th this opens up a new possibility that Bo had never even considered before. And that is to actually get married to a woman and have children and he's really, you know, curious about how would that even work logistically? Like, how has Malcolm managed that? And how can he live in that sort of relationship? Um, and how can uh, his wife agree to it? And does his children know? Um, those kinds of questions are milling around in Bo's head. And uh, I think that this has given him... Something to think about that I think that he finds intriguing and um, a bit alluring. Even though, of course, it's not a good road to go down. <laughs> but uh, I think that a boy is really thinking about this um, and weighing his options. So Bo and, Le and Leroy are returning from their outing. 
and um, yeah, <laughs> boss comfort is uh, really really low, um, and it's also a bit worn out now as well from his outing. So I think that I'm going to have him um, lounge on the couch and eventually take a nap as well. And uh, yeah, Leroy, um, his uh, mood is actually reset, interestingly enough. Okay, fine. <laughs> so he's feeling great, even though he was uh, tired just a moment ago. Okay, and Brittany is at it again with the um, base. But um, shockingly, her plants... Okay, this one is dead, but <laughs> these ones actually aren't. So I'm gonna see if I can try to have her save them. So, boy is uh, laying down to nap, and Oliver wants to bring a friend home from work, but I'm not interested in that. Here we go. Um, and... Yeah, he needs a um, shower, but I think he's gonna take a bath to get some um, comfort up as well. Okay, so, so Brittany has a um, bronze talent badge in gardening so far. So she can't talk to the plants, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, maybe she can uh, make them survive. And this one she needs to dispose. Um, question if, if she wants to plant something else, then it's soon going to be winter, so I don't think so, actually. I think that she can uh, make some daisy bouquets. And of course, normally this um, is giving... Um, the arts and crafts hobby, but I have a mod to make it instead nature, so that's why it's a good hobby for Brittany, <laughs> I think. Yeah, and um, I think that Oliver wants to wind down upstairs with his uh, drums, so um, I'm gonna have him go and practice. Oh, he's feeling a lot better, um, so I'm gonna have him freshen up again. He can... Um, Wash his face. Oliver started out uh, playing the piano in his child room, but I think eventually he started to gravitate towards the drum kit, making a lot of noise. <laughs> I feel like that's his thing. So he's um, learned how to play the bass as well, but uh, I think that drums is um, his instrument of choice. Bo, on the other hand, his uh, instrument is uh, the um, keyboard, or the piano, I suppose. Alright, so um, I think that Bo wants to um, invite Bruce over. Yes, he's just gonna gussy up and be right over. And take out the trash for now. And I think that um, Oliver is going to start on dinner. So let's just make some uh, hamburgers. And here is Bruce. So they are um, still just greeting each other with a hug, I see. And now uh, Bruce wants to do a tough handshake. So um, keeping up pretenses, of course. And... Um, yeah, I think that um, while they wait for dinner, um, they can just head into the um, living room. And um, Bo is um, a little bit awkward right now. Um, he's uh, still feeling a bit off. From earlier and his uh, head is milling around with uh, a thousand different thoughts and uh, even though he's um, sitting very closely and intimately with Bruce um, he um, 
it's very like slow on responding to questions and just uh, letting Bruce carry the conversation. And um, yeah, he allows Bruce to distract him a bit though. But um, yeah, it's um, a little bit stilted, the conversation, I think. Okay, so the dinner is done. So I'm going to have them um, sit and eat. And Brittany is also going to join. Oh, what? where are you going, Bruce? <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> Don't go outside to eat. My goodness. No. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, please sit down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm, sit down and eat, please. All right. Yeah. So, um, Oliver and Bruce are sat next to each other. Um, not really liking it. And yeah. <laughs> You can see the expression on his face. He really wants to get out of there. So he uh, hurries away <laughs> as far away as he can from Bruce. Uh, okay. Apparently they like to use the counters out here, but uh, he can clean that up. And uh, apparently L Leroy is at it again, playing with uh, Melissa this time. So I'm just going to let Oliver do whatever he wants right now. You obviously don't want to sit down and <laughs> interact with these guys anyway. And of course, it's a bit um, awkward for Brittany as well, keeping up the charade uh, in front of Oliver when she knows that the um, boy is actually dating Bruce. Looks like they're talking a lot about the weather. <laughs> um but yeah, Brittany has been pushing Bo for a very long time to come out from the closet and uh, let his family know about his real feelings. Um, but so far, um, he has made a lot of promises, but he has never followed through, really. Right. Um, so I think that now that they have eaten, uh, Bo is going to bring Bruce upstairs to his room. Oh, yeah. The Oliver is going <laughs> to start things with Bruce, of course. Yeah. So they're poking each other. Um, I have a mod that um, makes poking the most violent thing they can autonomously do um, towards each other. I think maybe slapping as well, um, but they can't attack each other uh, anymore. So this is as far as they're going to be able to get unless I intervene. <laughs> um, so yeah, he made it into his room and he's going to call over Bruce. You don't have to follow him. <laughs> okay, go back into the room, please. Yeah. Um, so I think that they're going to um, chat about, um, you know, Bo's standoffishness. Um, Bruce has uh, been feeling that something is up. He's not acting uh, naturally, not even um, taking into consideration that he's um, hiding the relationship from Oliver. He's being really cold and distant and isn't really talking to Bruce and um, he's starting to get fed up with this. He has been questioning the reasons why they need to keep this secret and at first when they st first started to go out and get to know each other he um, just agreed and um, wanted to get to know Bo better and uh, just went with it but the more they interact the more uh, serious they get um, Bruce starts to feel like he's the dirty little secret <laughs> and he doesn't like that at all. Um, so uh, I think that he's actually going to um, question Bo really strongly um, and start to argue with him about this. 
doesn't understand what has um, made Bo feel so... What has made him feel like he needs to keep even more distance. I mean, last time that they spent long time together, um, they were actually hanging out in this room and uh, sharing their first kiss. And uh, today, Bo is really, really cold towards him. So he's... Um, yeah, not understanding at all where this is coming from. And, and of course, Bo can't really tell him <laughs> what is on his mind and all the things that are uh, running through um, his head. So I think that he just snaps and, um, well, not really snaps, but he um, he's acting as if he doesn't understand what Bruce is talking about. Um, as if uh, nothing is amiss at all and that uh, Bruce is being overdramatic. And um, basically tells him that, uh, you know, if this is such a big issue to you all of a sudden that you can't um, understand that I am not comfortable with uh, being openly gay yet, that you can't support me in that, then I don't know what you're doing here. I don't know what you're trying to um, make happen. But um, if you want to be in this with me, then you have to support me in this and um, well I don't think that Bruce is taking that well at all I think that he's had enough this is um, not what he signed up for um, and um, he um, starts to just think that Bo has some really ugly sides to him um, sides that he doesn't like at all and um, yeah he's he's not even having a crush on him anymore Bo still has a crush on, on Bruce, though. Um, so I think that Bo tells Bruce that, you know, if you can't support me in this, if you're going to be this difficult, then um, let's just be friends. Let's not even do this anymore. I, I don't care about this. And um, yeah, Bruce is like, fine, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to uh, leave and uh, don't call me again. He's really upset with uh, with Bo and uh, maybe he doesn't like mean it um, completely. But he's really angry right now. Um, he feels treated unfairly. And uh, I think that Bo is like feeling very regretful, like he did some really big mistake right now. Um, but still, he can't shake um, all of the thoughts running through his head and also some sort of self-righteousness that, you know, he needs to take his time. He's not ready yet um, and he can't be forced into it and he still doesn't know what to do. So, um, yeah, I think that he's um, also annoyed at Bruce, even if he also feels bad. <laughs> he's going to take a shower. And um, try to clear his head a bit. Apparently, um, Oliver is down here reading. He can interact a bit with his dog. And Brittany's up here taking a bubble bath. Well, the routing in here is incredible. <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice. Now Leroy won't... Um, Scratch any furniture or bite any furniture. So I think that I want Oliver to sit here. Um, Bo can grab a cup of coffee, I think. And Brittany, I think I also want to yeah, have a cup of coffee, actually. And they can hang out a bit together in um, the living room. And again, Bo is talking about making out. Yeah, he looks like he's really curious about that. <laughs> of course he would be. Um, yeah. They made best friends, which is nice. Brittany and uh, Oliver, though, still aren't all that close. At least not yet. But trying to get a good angle here is not easy. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> So Bo has finished his coffee and um, yeah, it's getting really late, so 
I think I'm just gonna have him use the bathroom and go to bed really. I think that uh, Brittany and um, Oliver are gonna stay up for a little bit longer. I would like them to become friends if they can. Now, interestingly enough, um, both during this conversation now and also when Bo was here, they were chatting about the Watcher, um, which makes me think a little bit about what religion they have. Because what I do when I um, have my children in the hood is that I just make them agnostic and then I wait until they are adults in order to decide um, what path they want to go, or at least uh, young adults. Um, and I'm not sure if I have actually decided um, about what these guys should have. But if I'm looking at uh, Oliver Bertino, I actually have decided that he is faithful. And I think that that actually makes sense. Uh, it's the same with his brother, Orlando. And um, yeah, also their father, Abhijit. So I think that they, they come from a religious family, really. So it makes sense, I think, that Oliver would also be faithful. As for Bo, he is just agnostic right now. Looking at, um, let's start with Brandy. So yeah, Brandy is faithful, as is John. So that family is also um, common visitors of the church. And looking at the... Um, Dustin, as well, he's also faithful. So I think that it would make sense, actually, that Bo is religious, that he uh, believes in the Watcher. So I'm going to change Bo's uh, religion in my spreadsheet to faithful. And then lastly, Brittany. Brittany I'm not as sure about. Um, Oh, but I already made her faithful. And that works, I think. Uh, she also comes from a, a family that is technically faithful, mostly, except for Jan, who is agnostic, actually. But Komi is faithful, and uh, as are Chandler and Christopher as well. Yeah, I think that Brittany is the one who's who could be most on the fence, though. Similarly to her mother. Yeah, since they were talking about the Watcher and, and they seem to get along when they talk about that, I think I'm gonna just keep that for now. Unless something like life-changing happens in Brittany's life that would make her, uh, her faith in the Watcher be shaken. And she can remain faithful. Yeah, they're talking about it again. <laughs> this is the symbol that I think about for like the watcher. Yeah, they're making quick friends. Yeah, nice. Now they're actually friends. So I'm just gonna go ahead and send Brittany up to her bedroom and um, yeah, Oliver as well. I think that Leroy is already, yeah, asleep on the pillow in here. <laughs> and as is uh, Bo on his pillow. I think it's very possible that he will have nightmares tonight. There's been a lot of things happening today, after all. And um, there are a lot of um, maybe sinister thoughts <laughs> aren't the right choice of words, but... Uh, at least some um, troubling thoughts that he has on his mind. And that's where we leave Bo Newby for this time. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. Take care and see you next time. Bye.